Hello, welcome to another Verbling class and in this hour it's going to be an English reading class so if you have a reservation um, you can go ahead and get that now and we will wait a few minutes to see who shows up. Uh, it usually takes about a minute or two for people to come into class. I know that there are a couple other classes going on right now and they are just finishing so um, probably some people from those classes will be joining us shortly. In the meantime, hi Donato, how are you doing today? Hi Lisa, I'm doing very well. Nice. You? I'm doing well, thank you. Awesome. And Rafael's joining us. Hello, Rafael. Oops. Hi, Rafael. More more verbling today, Rafael. On your day off. <laughs> I can't hear you. Do you have your microphone? Uh, it doesn't look like it's muted, but I don't hear now, maybe. Don't hear a sound. Is it working? Do you, do you hear him, Donato? Yes, teacher. I can hear you. Do you hear um, Rafael? No, I can't. Yeah. Raphael, try coming, um, refreshing the page. Maybe that will help. Come, go out and come back in. Yeah. So, uh, Donato, my yeah. <laughs> when, when is your big birthday party happening in Amsterdam? It is going to be um, since the 8th. Okay. The, till the... the, 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 the 11th of November, although my uh, birthday is the 14th. <laughs> oh, okay. A little early so celebration. I just, I just, yeah, I just decided to make the, uh, to make it in advance mm -hmm. because there is just the, the weekend, no? So we can take advantage of the Saturday night, yeah. Friday and Saturday night. Nice. That sounds fun. So it's coming up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Rafael, try it now. Hello? Yes, okay. that's better. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. And hi there, uh, Nihan. Welcome. Hi, Lisa. Thank you. And Alpro. Taxes again. <laughs> <laughs> Taxes again. Well, it came up, it came up um, yesterday or last night in a class that we were having and we were talking about a variety of things and one of them, uh, well we were actually talking about um, do we feel optimistic or pessimistic about certain things and one of the things that we often feel pessimistic about is uh, government, <laughs> our governments and so we had two people in the class from Mexico and one of them mentioned to me about this tax and um, I think it's interesting so I thought we could read about it and discuss a little bit um, because it's a common theme around around the world and I think everybody has opinions about it so it's often a good uh, topic is how do you you know what is your what is going on with your government and do you agree with what they're doing and so this one thing that Mexico is doing um, of course because this is one thing that governments do is they deal with trying to raise revenue for things uh, that the government has to pay for and one way they do that of course the main way is through taxes and so uh, the latest thing that uh, governments I think around the world are considering taxing is food um, now they do that already but this is a special tax um, for junk, you know, what they call junk food, so uh, sodas and things like that, chips and whatever, and so it passed. So in some, in some places, people are trying to do that, and it's not passing, but in Mexico, it just passed. So that's what we we're going to read about and have a yeah. little discussion. Yeah. I agree with you. The taxes are really important. In every yeah, way. well, it's... It's it's like you're in your everyday life, you know, it, it comes up <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, hi, Amparo. How are you? Hi, teacher. I'm fine, thank you. What about you? Good, good. 
So um, I provided the link there, and maybe you guys have already all gone there. Um, we did have a few more reservations, but um, we'll see if anybody else joins us. And in the meantime, we can get started. It's not a very long article, so I think we will have time to uh, discuss this in particular. And then right after this class, I'm going to have a conversation class where we are going to be uh, discussing in a larger sense the role of government versus, you know, individual people and that that whole topic of do we agree <laughs> with our government and what do we do when we don't agree with what they're doing and you know that type of thing so um, so let's get started so this is the title is Mexican Congress passes tax bill with higher junk food levy I also thought it would be interesting to read because um, uh, you know sometimes we tend I tend to or maybe in the English classes people can tend to focus on uh, what's happening in the United States, um, but I like to expand it out to other countries because it's also, for me at least, interesting to find out what are other people doing um, around the world with these types of things, um, things that affect our everyday life. So we read about before about you know the Chinese uh, college entrance exam, and it turns out that many countries have a similar type of exam and. So it's just interesting to see how human beings uh, make choices around the world. So let's see what the, the Mexican Congress decided. Mexico's Congress increased a proposed junk food levy as it passed a tax bill championed by President Enrique Pena Nieto uh, to reduce the nation's dependence on oil revenue and promote growth. The lower house voted 299 to 160 with one abstention yesterday to impose an 8% tax on high calorie foods such as PepsiCo incorporated um, incorporated and then they put the apostrophe S Cheetos so the actual food item is the chips these uh, Cheetos following the same decision by Senate. Okay, Amparo, why don't you start for us? Mexico's Congress includes a proposed junk food levy as it passed a tax bill championed by President Enrique Peña Nieto to reduce the nation's dependence on oil revenue and promote growth. The lower house voted uh, 299 to 160 with one abstention yesterday to impose an A. Uh, mm -hmm. percent tax on high calorie food such as Mexico incorporate uh, Cheetos following the same decision by the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this um, this is uh, taken from Bloomberg uh, which is a business kind of a website and so th whenever they mention uh, a corporation or a company they always provide the stock market uh, uh, abbreviation there so that's that and so that's why they put the apostrophe s after that so it, it below Cheetos belongs to PepsiCo Incorporated alright so let's just go over some vocabulary so the Congress increased a proposed junk food levy so a levy is just another word for tax I think in this this article we have three different types of uh, words that are basically expressing the same idea of a tax a levy a duty and a tax uh, so if it's proposed, it's what comes to the Congress as a proposal. So um, it wasn't yet passed, and that's what they were talking about. Um, and it was championed, so it was supported by the president of Mexico. He is one of the main supporters of this uh, proposed bill, tax bill. Whenever you champion something, it's like you support it. You want some. You want in this case, you want other people to support it too. So you just really um, are in support of it, or in other in other ways, you can also say it's, you like something. It's not so much in this case, but if you champion, uh, you know, doing yoga every day, it's like you want people to do it because you think it's really good. All right. So dependence. So he's trying to reduce their dependence on oil revenue, at, and he wants to promote growth too. These are all very common things that you. If you're ever going to listen to a news report or read about governments, they're always talking about this same thing, trying to figure out how to increase the revenue and promote 
economic growth in the country. So I guess now uh, Mexico is dependent, so they are relying on their oil revenues. But he wants to get away from that. All right, so the lower house, they voted, and they had one abstention. So one person abstained. That's the verb to abstain. And so if you have a person abs uh, one abstention, that means that one person just did not vote either way. And they voted to impose. So when you impose something, it's like you're making somebody else do something. So they're imposing a tax on the citizens of Mexico. They're going to require them to pay this tax. Cheetos, I don't know if you guys have, do you guys have Cheetos where you live in different, you're a different yes. country? Yeah, <laughs> Cheetos. That used to be it's my, delicious. yeah, that used to be my favorite uh, kind of chip. Um, I don't really eat those kind of foods anymore too much, but um, they're pretty popular still. They're cheesy, cheesy little puffy, puffy things. Yes, you like them, Nihon? Yes, but I used to eat them because yeah. <laughs> in my age, it's reality. Right, yeah. I used to eat them too when I was a kid. Okay, it's a, it's a crazy picture. Cheeto bath. Okay. Oh. All right, back to our reading. All right, the measure, which also raises income taxes and creates new duties on capital gains and sugary drinks, now awaits... Pena Nieto's signature. The Senate version raised the tax on junk food from an originally proposed 5%. Okay, Donato. The measure, which also raises income taxes and creates new duties on capital gains and sugary drinks, now awaits Pena Nieto's signature. The Senate version raised the tax on junk food from an originally proposed 5%. Mm -hmm. So the measure, anytime we're talking about uh, a bill or a law that's uh, going to be passed, that's uh, before it gets passed, it, they refer to it as the measure. Um, it's the thing that they're working on. Um, you can also use the word measure, like we are taking measures to ensure safety for all drivers or something like that. So we're doing things. It's the thing you're doing. <laughs> all right, so here again, duties, it's another name for tax. Um, capital gains, you guys know what capital gains is? Whenever you, like, um, for example, sell a house or you sell a business or sell something and you get a lot of money, that's your capital gains. So there's taxes on that. You don't just get to have that as your income without tax. And, of course, they're also taxing now these sugary drinks like sodas. Um, pretty much... The Senate version raised the tax. So, and I guess in the Mexican Congress, uh, you can bring things to the Congress, and one house or the other can make changes, just like here in the United States. So it actually went up from the 5%, it went up to 8%. Pena Nieto plans to lift growth, which slowed more than the government expected this year, by shifting taxes away from the state controlled energy sector to spur both public and private investment in oil. The president overcame political opposition to pass the reform, which bodes well for his proposal to break a 75-year state monopoly on oil, according to Alonso Cervera, chief Mexico economist of Credit Suisse Group AG. Okay, Donato. Again? Oh, sorry. Nihon. <laughs> no, <Raphael. laughs> I got lost. <laughs> okay, we will help you, Raphael. <laughs> you, you don't want to read? <laughs> Me? Yes, taking your a, turn. Nihon's taking a pass. No! Nihon, did I you already read? Okay. No, don't have to just read, and it's Raphael's turn now. Okay, sure. Go for it, Rafael. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Piano Nieto plans to lift growth, which showed more than government expected this year, by shifting taxes away from the state-controlled energy sector to spur both public and private investment in oil. The president overcame political opposition to pass the reform, 
which bodes well for this proposal to break a 75-year state monopoly on oil. According to Alonso Cervera, Chief Mexico Economist of Credit Suisse Group AG. Mm -hmm. So again, here we're talking, he's talking about growth. So he plans to lift growth, so he wants to increase the economic growth, um, which apparently had slowed down. Um, and so whenever you lift something up, as you, in this sense, he wants to increase it, not really literally lifting something up, like lifting a baby up. Um, and to spur, to spur, when you spur um, investment in something, it means you create or you, um, you start it off. You kind of like ignite it, you spur it. Um, bodes well, those are usually, it either something either bodes well or not. <laughs> and so if something bodes well, it means it's going well. So this is a good sign. The president overcame political opposition to pass the reform, which bodes well. So the, the, the fact that he was able to pass this reform is a good signal that he will get what he wants, which is to break this monopoly. So apparently in um, uh, Mexico, uh, there's been a state monopoly on oil. You guys know what monopoly is? Yes. 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 It's a famous game. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a famous game. Still. And a ruling style. Yeah. yeah, but you don't you don't own own oil fields though in Monopoly. But anyways, no. the state monopoly. So the state is controlling basically the oil, and like all capitalist countries, he wants to open it up to um, private investments. Probably is what he's trying to do. Um, and not have the state be the only one running it. All right, this is the most challenging reform he has faced, and he's been successful, Severa said in a telephone interview. This is a good reform to strengthen public finances and give the government more flexibility to spend. Okay, Alexandra? Okay. Moment. Uh-huh. This is the most challenging reform he has faced, and he has been successful, Severa said in a telephone interview. This is a good reform to strengthen public finances and give the government more flexibility to spend. Mm -hmm. All right. So whenever you're faced with a challenge, you're just you have to. Um, it's something you have to manage or do. <laughs> so they've been faced. What you have to encounter? What did you say, Nina? D deal with. Oh, deal with. Yeah, sorry, Alexander. Yeah, yeah. You have to deal with it. You, whenever you're faced with something, it's something that you have to deal with. You have to face it. Um, so I think you guys pretty much understand what's going on in this. This is a good reform. This is this is um, this is very common political speech. So whenever you're reading or listening to politicians uh, talk. They always say these types of things. <laughs> it's good reform, strengthen. You know, they talk about strengthening things and improving uh, economic uh, welfare of the people, that type of thing. So these are very common vocabulary words that you will you will come across a lot in in the debate. I mean, not in the debate, but in the realm of politics. So the peso, which is the Mexican money, weakened 0.4 percent to 13. 0 0.0680 per dollar at 10:35 a.m. in Mexico City. The yield on fixed rate peso de denominated government bonds due in 2024 rose 5 basis points to 6.08%. All right. Ampro. That's not so exciting, but you get some numbers in there. <laughs> Go ahead, Ampro. The peso weakened oh for uh, 0 0.4 percent to 13.0680 per dollar at 10:35 a.m. in Mexico City. The yield on fixed rate peso dominated denominated government bonds due in 2024 rose five basis point to 6.0 percent. Yeah, 6.08 percent. All right, so the peso weakened, so their money was weakened a little bit uh, in contrast to the dollar, and 
the bond. So these are things that uh, they're always talking about. So the peso denominated is just that it's it's not a U.S. Uh, dollar bond. It's in in the money of Mexico, which is the peso. So denomination is the the money that it's referring to. If it's a U.S. or a dollar denominated, that's in dollars. So the government bonds is just what they sell to raise money. So um, it went up the basis point. We're not going to go into that, but that's an economic. Those are economic terms there. So the soda impact. The lower house approved changes made by the Senate to reduce the income tax for those who earn between 500,000 pesos, 38,384 dollars, and 750,000 pesos per year to 30 percent from the 31 percent initially passed by the house. The measure still raises the income tax ceiling to 35% from 30% for high earners and leaves untouched a new tax on sugary drinks of one peso per liter passed by the house. Okay, Imad. Hi, hi. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that I'm back. In fact, sorry. <laughs> uh, the, lower, uh, the lower house approved changes Made uh, made by the Senate to reduce the income tax for those who earn between 500,000 thousand uh, pesos, uh, uh, 30, uh, 38,000 38, 30, 348 hundred uh, sorry dollar and uh, 315,000 yeah <laughs> yeah per pesos per year to 30 percent. Of the 31% initially passed by the House, the measure uh, the measure still raised, in, um, raised the income tax ceiling to 35% um, from 30% for high earners, uh, earners and lower untouched uh, a new tax on sugar drinks for one peso per liter passed by the House. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the lower house, so in, you know, that's just uh, the different uh, parts of the Congress. Um, they approved the changes to reduce the income tax. So, yeah, it's just a little bit from 30% instead of the 31% initially passed. So that's the House passed that first. Um, the measure still raises the income tax ceiling. So maybe you guys have been hearing about the ceiling. You know that in your house you have a ceiling, but they're also talking about um, the debt the ceiling. Maximum. Yeah, in the United States, it's the uppermost that you can go. So the tax ceiling uh, to 35% for the high high earners, so people who make more than that uh, 750,000 pesos, um, and leaves untouched. So they didn't make any changes uh, to the new tax on the sodas, the sugary drinks, of one peso per liter. All right. Can I ask? Uh, yes, one Iman. question. Mm -hmm. uh, you described the, the peso denomination. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This, this term, yeah. Peso uh, de, uh, denominated. Did I denominate it? Yeah. Yes. So if um, it just means that it is in pesos. So when you buy bonds, government bonds, um, sometimes mm -hmm. they might be in the the currency of your country. Like in Mexico, it's the peso, and sometimes they put it in a different currency, which is m um, more traded around the world, like the U.S. dollar. So I think they yeah. were just making sure that you know the reader knows that these are peso denominated government bonds. Yeah. They're not U.S. bonds. Yeah. yeah. Is that what your question was? Denominated, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, just like that. Yeah. yeah, the denomination that's used a lot in just describing which money you're talking about, <laughs> which denomination. <laughs> you know, there there are other um, uh, meanings to that word too. The National Soft yeah. Drink Producers Association, which includes Coca-Cola, FEMSA, SAB, and Arca Continental, SAB. Latin America's biggest Coca-Cola bottlers estimates that a one peso per liter soda tax would result in the loss of 20,000 jobs from workers who cut sugarcane to those in factories. Okay, Nihan, you only get two two numbers there. 
I can add, I can add, okay. some, more, add some more numbers to you. <laughs> no, no, no way. <laughs> no, Lisa. <laughs> oh, okay, go gosh. ahead. The National Soft Drink Producers Association, which includes Coca-Cola, FEMSA, SAB, and ARCA Continental SAB, Latin America's biggest Coca-Cola bottlers, estimates that a one peso per liter soda tax would res result in the loss of 20,000 jobs from workers who cut sugar cane to those in factories. Yeah. So this is always the um, <clears throat> biggest uh, complaint, I guess, um, for um, industry, uh, industry companies, companies in the industries that are going to be taxed. Is they they think that they're going to sell less, and therefore they will have to cut jobs. I don't know if it's actually true. Um, it will be something that you know people will see over time. Do you guys think that I'm not sure what one peso is? I don't think it's that much, yeah, money. But do you think that a person who drinks soda regularly will stop drinking soda based on a one peso per liter soda tax? It depends. Would Would you? I don't know. Uh, I'm not really oh, no. good with soda, but I don't think so. That's they like. They will just continue to, just to drink, I guess. It's if for in for America. Yeah, that's just do. that much. Just what? Donato. We ju we should just consider how many people stopped smoking. After uh -huh. the discontinuing uh, uh, price for box, for cigarette box. So, I mean uh, that people continue to pay huge amount of money for yeah. just a box of cigarettes. Yes. Although it raised uh, not one peso for box, but sometimes two euros. Right, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I was surprised. The speaking about cigarettes, I was pr so shocked actually <laughs> the other day when I uh, a person, a lady who works at the bank where I go, uh, we were talking, and it turns out she's a smoker. And uh, for some reason, we were talking about that, and we asked her how much does she smoke per day, and we figured out that the amount of cigarettes that she buys every month. Uh, and she buys them in cartons, so not just one pack at a time, but like a carton which might have, I don't know, 10, economy, 10 packs economy. or something. Yeah, she was spending like $600 a month on cigarettes. And I was yeah. shocked. <laughs> my, mother, wow. my mother always says, yeah? my mother always says that she won't eat, but she keeps smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I mean six, and then I started. Uh, I think it, it, it. She didn't feel good about it, but I was so shocked. I just started saying things that you could do with six hundred dollars a month. Like you could buy, you could fly to Hawaii every month. You know, you could, you could go take a trip. You could, uh, you could buy a car because that's like a a nice maybe car. She, you know, <laughs> maybe she, she will uh, under a lot of stress. Yeah, I think she's been doing it for many years, and she said. And then her husband also smokes, and he smokes less. But I think it's like we figured out probably around four hundred dollars a month. So right there, she and no, her no. Hus husband, it's like a thousand dollars a month. They could buy another I, I house. I have an idea. <laughs> what? Is, I think his her husband is not is not uh, like uh, smoking less, but he's stealing some of her cigarettes. <laughs> 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 Yeah, this maybe. is the only solution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I've never smoked before, so I just never really knew the cost of cigarettes, and um, I just was sh I was just shocked. So yeah, I I didn't I didn't because that's a lot of money, you know, for a person. I mean, she's not rich; she's working at a bank, you know. She so that is amazing. Okay, anyway, so yeah. I think maybe so. I don't know. Will this really happen? These two thousand or sorry, twenty thousand jobs will they be lost from you know 
sugar cane workers, people working in the bottling factories, the bottlers. Because um, in I think in Mexico still, I don't know, what is it like, uh, Amparo, for you? Coca-Cola, is it still in glass bottles? The, that depends on the, the size. Oh, the okay. Three liters, for example, is, is in plastic. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have uh, just um, half liter, I mm -hmm. think. Half liter, yes, it is in, in, in glass. Glass mm -hmm. bottles, yeah. Here, mm -hmm. I don't, here it's like a specialty item if you buy a Coca Cola in a glass bottle. It's mostly aluminum cans and plastic uh, one liter soda bottles. Yeah. I don't drink soda either, so I don't know. I don't spend money on that. <laughs> Carlos Capistran, chief Mexico economist at Bank of America Corp, said the new levies won't sufficiently widen the tax base and may negatively impact companies. Stocks from Latin America's biggest Coca-Cola bo bottlers have fallen since Pena Nieto presented the tax bill September 8th. Coca-Cola FEMSA, FEMSA lost 6.1% and ARCA has dropped 8.7%. Okay, whose turn is it now? Donato. Carlos Capistian, Chief Mexico Economist at Bank of America Corporation, said the new Levis wants to significantly widen the tax base and may negatively impact companies. Stocks from Lenny, Latin America's biggest Coca Cola bottlers have fallen since Peña Nieto presented the tax bill September 8. September 8. Mm -hmm. Coca Cola FEMSA lost 6.1% and uh, ARCA has dropped. 8.7 percent. Mm -hmm. So again, another word that they use um, to talk about taxes is the levy or the levies in plural. And he doesn't think it will be sufficient. It won't be enough. It won't widen the tax base enough. So it's not going to really um, make that much money, he thinks. And, and of course, being uh, part of the businesses, he thinks it's going to negatively impact companies. So, you know, that's of course what uh, any company would be worried about is a drop in sales. So, selling less of your product would, you know, obviously decrease the profitability of your company. So, that's what uh, these types of companies are concerned about. Of course, the idea is, you know, maybe they don't care <laughs> because people shouldn't be drinking these sodas anyway, something like that. All right, so reduced incentives. Um, I worry a bit that the new taxes may reduce incentives to invest, Capistran said in an emailed request for comment earlier this week. In the end, the reform is getting more resources from debt than from taxes in 2014, which increases public debt and is something to monitor going forward. Okay. Alexandra, now I'm just jumping everywhere. Alexandra. <laughs> Alexandra. Reduced incentives. <laughs> okay. <laughs> lost in the microphone wire. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm getting tangled up. Uh, yeah, reduced incentives. I worry a bit that the new taxes may reduce incentives to invest. <coughs> Capistran said in an email request for comments earlier this week. In the end, uh, in the end, the reform is getting more resources from debt than from taxes in 2014, which increases public debt and is something to monitor going forward. Mm -hmm. So this is always the debate whenever you're reading business um, articles, it, you know, uh, government versus business, and one of them thinks it's going to help increase their revenue, like the government's revenue, but then of course the businesses think that it's going to actually um, reduce people's incentives 
to invest. So, of course, if I'm an investor and I could invest my money in Coca-Cola, but if I see that less people are going to buy sodas, then I'm probably not going to want to invest because maybe it won't be a profitable business um, much longer. So, that's the idea of reducing incentives. You know, you won't have an incentive. You won't have a reason uh, to invest. Um, and investment is always what the businesses are looking for to increase their profits, to to grow their businesses, that type of thing. Um, so the reform, you know, you guys know what reform is, what they're trying to fix, how they're trying to fix things. But of course, they're always dealing with debt and do you increase public debt or how do you get, you know, what you want. So they're going to have to just monitor it going forward. So that's also a common term you hear politicians say they're going to have to monitor it going forward. They don't know yet what's going to happen, so they're going to have to be aware, check on it, and see what actually happens with this tax. May or may not have the results that they think. Uh, Pena Nieto presented, along with his tax measure, a proposal for a 2014 budget deficit of 1.5% of gross domestic product, excluding investment in Pemex, which is the oil uh, company. Congress had approved a balanced budget for this year. He's also proposed a bill currently before the Senate to increase private investment in the energy sector. Okay, Rafael. Uh, Piano Nieto presented, along with this tax measure, a proposal for a 2014 budget deficit of 1.5% of gross domestic product, excluding investment in Pemex. Congress had approved a balanced budget for this year. He has also proposed a bill currently before the Senate to increase private investment in the energy sector. Mm -hmm. I, th I thought this was the interesting um, paragraph in this uh, article because especially in here in the United States where we're, we are operating at such a deficit and we have a huge uh, public debt and our government shut down recently uh, over fights about it um, but Congress had approved a balanced budget for this year so that's kind of an amazing thing to have an actually an actual balanced budget um, but the, the president um, has a different proposal. <laughs> so his his proposal is going to work at a deficit, so not being balanced, so working still in debt. Um, and it's even excluding the investment that they make in the oil uh, company Pemex there, a gas company. Um, yeah, so yes, I, I wish we had a person from Mexico here, but I know that this is happening. Uh, the government's wanting to increase private investment in the um, energy sector. Yes, Ahmad, go ahead. Um, the question is, what what does it mean with the government shut down? Is it that, does it mean that the government stop all the expenses from no. the moment they? What does it mean? When the U.S. government shut down, what it meant was they could not agree on a budget, and so since they couldn't agree on the budget, they decided to to stop spending any more money but it's really kind of a dumb thing because it costs money to shut um, offices down and then it they knew they were going to open back up so then it cost even more money to open them back up so it's a dumb thing to do economically but politically they're trying to um, basically kind of bully each other into getting what they want getting the other side to do what they want and so what happened in reality was some uh, people that work for the government in different um, sections of the government like for example if you were a ranger at a park, a national park, the national park system was closed which meant that if you went to go to a national park it was closed, you couldn't go there and the people who work there usually were sent home and that, that's called furloughed and they were furloughed so that, and they were not getting paid and they just basically could not go to work and they had to wait and then after two weeks or whatever it was, they figured out, you know, how they could move forward. I think it's only temporary, but at least everybody went back to work. So what it actually looked like was some what they call like non-essential government jobs. So it was not the, the specific kind of jobs that would shut down all the workings of the whole government, you know, or 
you know, just some things that they consider to be non-essential, like parks and monuments and certain things like that. Does that make sense? Like the government, yeah, so. the Congress still got paid their money, for example. <laughs> so that was a yeah. big, big problem for people. <laughs> Because some of the um, workers definitely, you know, if you live paycheck to paycheck and you don't get a paycheck, then your bills start piling up and it can be difficult to um, to live. So some people had to take out short-term loans, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Grupo Bimbo, S-A-B, a maker and vendor of bakery products, is reviewing the option of reformulating some of its products to lower their caloric density. Chief Executive Officer Daniel Cervici said in an October 24th conference call. Okay, Niha. Group of Bimbo SAB, a maker and vendor of the bakery products, is reviewing the option of reformulating some of its products to lower their caloric density. Chief Executive Officer Daniel Sarvici said in an October October 24th conference call. <coughs> yeah, October. Reformulating. So that just means they're going to try to figure out a new recipe <laughs> to reformulate it, to rework it, to redo it, so that it maybe has less calories. So then. I guess if it, I don't know, it's kind of interesting, like, what calorie, uh, you know, does do you get taxed, like, after 500 calories or after 125 calories? I don't know how the, the tax is f um, calculated, you know, but if they're trying to figure out a lower calorie um, product, I'm just wondering if that means it won't be taxed, so... That's interesting. Like, who decides what food actually gets taxed, at what level of the calories, you know? So, in addition to the junk food tax, the legislation imposes a 10% levy on capital gains, a 7.5% duty on mining company profits, and an increase in sales taxes in regions bordering the U.S. to 16% from 11%, bringing them in line with the rest of the country. All right. Uh, whose turn is it? <laughs> Donato? Okay. In addition to the junk food tax, the, legisla the legislation imposes a 10% levy on capital gains, a 7.5% duty on mining companies' profits, and an increase in sales taxes in region bordering the U.S. to 16% from 11%, bringing them in line with the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. So the legislation is just refers to the Congress, so the people who make the laws. Um, yeah. So the, you know, this article isn't only about the junk food tax. That's the the what they led with with the title. That kind of is more interesting than the rest of these things. But it's also reviewing some of the other taxes that got thrown in there in that new uh, proposal that passed. So some of these mining companies. So um, in in Mexico, I'm not sure what they mine for, but maybe silver, maybe some gold, other um, minerals and things. Um, so they're going to be taxed, and of course, the, always the sales tax. So we talked about that before in another class, um, <clears throat> which I started feeling better because in the United States, where I'm living right now anyways, it's only 9%, and I thought that was high, but 16% sales tax is quite a bit. But I guess that is um, uh, more normal uh, throughout Mexico because this is what it says here, bringing them in line. So that means they're going to match what it's like in other parts of the country. <clears throat> a last minute accord. The last minute accord is like an agreement um, at the last minute. The Opposition Democratic Revolution Party, or PRD, said it reached a last minute agreement with the Finance Ministry to change the bill in the Senate on October 30th as yesterday's deadline loomed for passage of the 2014 revenue portion of the nation's budget. So that's, they were kind of doing the same thing here in the U.S., and that's when we had a shutdown is when our Congress couldn't agree on it. Um, okay, Ahmad? Last-minute accord. The cooperation, um, sorry, 
<laughs> the opposition Democratic Revolution Party or PRD said it yeah it reached a, a, a last minute agreement with the finance ministry to change the bill in the Senate on October 13 uh, uh, as yesterday's deadline uh, loomed for miss for miss passage of uh, the 2014 revenue uh, portion of the nation's budget. Yeah. So the opposition is the party that is not in power yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to reach a last minute agreement, so to reach, oftentimes we think about reaching, like grabbing for something, but in this sense it means to um, achieve or to get to a last minute agreement. So they agreed on this, uh, they were able to make it happen. Um, and the deadline loomed. So it was like everybody knew it was coming, it was coming, and, and were they going to be able to pass this or not? So if something's looming, it's like it's just sitting there. You know it's coming, and there's some kind of uh, kind of controversy that's coming up to it. That's when we use the word loom. You know, the deadline was looming. It was just there going to happen, and we didn't know what was going to happen before the deadline. But this is the revenue portion of the nation's budget. So it wasn't necessarily the spending portion, it was the income. How are they going to get the money they need to um, spend the money they want to spend? So that's why we're talking about taxes, Nihon. <laughs> so how, how does the government get the money they want or need to, to do the things they want in the spending part of their budget? All right. The revenue plan was approved late yesterday with a spending budget of 4.467 trillion pesos, 3 billion pesos less than the lower house's proposal after the Senate altered the tax reform. Okay, uh, Alexandra. Are you caught in your wires again? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Mm, the revenue plan was approved late yesterday with a spending budget of six point six hundred and oh. <laughs> Four point. <laughs> My picture is jumping. Yeah. Four point. 467 trillion passes, 3 billion passes less than the lower house's proposal after the Senate altered the tax reform. Mm -hmm. Good. So they're spending budget. So this is how much money they think they're going to, or they're planning on spending, that's in their budget, um, which is actually less than the lower house's proposal um, after the Senate altered the tax reform. All right. The largest opposition National Action Party voted against the tax overhaul, so the big changes. Analysts forecast the economy will grow 1.2% this year from 3.9% in 2012 after the government reduced spending in the first half and exports to the U.S. stagnated, according to an October 22nd survey by Citigroup Inc.'s Banamex unit. All right, Nihan. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll help you. I'll help you out here with this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. The largest opposition National Action Party voted against the tax overhaul. Analysts forecast the economy will grow 1.2 percent this year from 3.9 percent in 2000. Uh, 12 after the government reduced spending in the first half and exports to the United States stagnated according to an October 20, 22nd survey by Citigroup Inc's Panamax units something mm -hmm. yeah so the largest opposition National Action Party voted. So I guess in, in uh, Mexico, as compared to the United States, more parties are represented in the, the Congress. In the United States, it's just the Democrats or the Republicans mostly. There might be a few independent um, candidates there, 
um, politicians, but not not usually. Okay, so the tax overhaul. Whenever you overhaul something, it's like you rework it. It's a whole. It's usually a big considered a big job to overhaul something. It's not just little changes. It's like big changes. So is the it, yeah. yeah. Is it similar to reform in this case? Yeah. Yeah. The word, the choice of you, you know, to use the word overhaul though, gives you more of a sense that it was a um, a lot of things were changing. Yeah. yeah, and it was maybe uh, more controversial, you know, rather than just a tax reform might just give you the sense that they're just making some changes to make it better. But an overhaul, like if you're going to overhaul your car, for example, you're going to like put a lot of new parts in it and fix the engine. But in the tax overhaul, is they they created a bunch of new taxes. It sounds like you know, and they increased taxes quite a bit in some areas. So it was a big change, not a small change. Um, so analysts, those people who analyze this type of data and information. They always make predictions or they forecast things. So whenever they forecast, they're telling you what it's going to look like in the future. Usually in the near future, they they don't really know, <laughs> but they are saying that it's going to grow uh, by this percentage, 1.2 percent, um, this year from 3.9 percent in 2012. So it's not growing as quickly. Um, and the other word here, you guys might want to know is US stagnated. So the exports to the US stagnated. So that means they slowed down. If something is stagnant, it's just not moving, it's not flowing, it's just kind of slowing down. Okay. So yeah. Uh, you, could, you know. be, could be yes. reach the reach the limit reach the limits, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you keep wondering, but I don't know if people keep being born and things. And you wonder how how can economies keep growing and growing and growing and more products and more money. But you know, the, there are like Nihon would probably know better. But there there seem to be like um, cycles, you know, where there's growth and then there's recession, depression, stagnation, and then you know people kind of in their personal lives stop spending so much money. And then something changes, and then they now they're on a roll again, and people start buying more things again, and and that's what really affects the import export, you know, of countries is the consumers of are they buying things? So, for example, you know, in the United States, as everywhere, I think um, China exports a lot of stuff, and that's because we buy a lot of stuff, <laughs> and it's cheap, you know. So, yeah. Okay, guys, so what do you think about this? Uh, what do you think about the idea of the government taxing junk food? Is that something that uh, you think is a good idea, or should should they not be taxing that kind of stuff? And also, I'm wondering, it, it, um, have have the governments in your own countries proposed such a tax? and Or maybe there already is one, I don't know. So, Alexandra, what do you think about it? Um, I must confess that by the end of this story, <laughs> <laughs> I already um had lost uh, had lost the uh, um like the thread of thoughts. <laughs> uh -huh. What were they trying to say? Um, I, but yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think there was an opinion in this particular piece. It was just information. You know, so they were just providing information, basically telling us what has happened. There's nobody's opinion represented really in this article. It's just like this is what they said, this is what happened, this is what they did. But I'm asking you for your opinion because, specifically re related to the junk food, because they talked a lot about the different taxes that are going to increase mm -hmm. as well. But I think the most interesting for an everyday person is just the junk food tax or levy is that something you know because that's something like especially like even a lot of poor people they buy coca-cola you know or something and now to ha it's not like a luxury food item you know it's not a luxury food item because if you want to eat fresh food you have to pay way more right I know, I asked my friends about this and they said that, yeah, you can eat healthy food, but that would cost lots of money, so many people prefer uh, to buy 
uh, cheap food, and this food is um, is junk food usually. Yes, yes so, usually, yeah. Yeah, like so, if you go to Walmart, you can buy a huge thing of like uh, cheese puffs or something for like two dollars, you know, versus you can barely buy like a couple of apples, you know, or something like that. Yeah, and people people are already restricted to <clears throat> some specific kind of food. Mm -hmm. They are not guilty that it happens, and what they do is just like they continue to seize people mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. imposing these uh, taxes on junk food. So I really don't think that this is the way out. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> uh, especially in Mexico. In Mexico, yeah. where the situation is um, is like very uh, not so well, let mm -hmm. us see. So. <laughs> well, um, I it doesn't say it in this article, but I saw it when I was trying to find an article about this. Um, some people are also saying it's like a way to fight obesity. So it's kind of like if if your government tells you there's some kind of health problem in your country and there's an obesity problem one way to get people to stop eating certain ways is to increase the price of it whether or not that is actually going to happen it's unknown yeah. it's kind of hypocrisy you say um, a good way to get money from the people like mm -hmm. you show them that the junk food is not good for them um, like playing, playing like a good man, like saying that junk food is not good. Yeah, it's yeah. not healthy for us. Yeah. But the the same time, we see we see that there's the smell of irony because the, their own intention that has been high be, behind these good things is the money. So because they have good income, they will get a lot, of, uh, like let's say millions of dollars from rising taxes on some very very simple things that you consume every day yeah. uh, and in total it will, it will affect everything because when you rise the price of the junk food uh, again you will have people like working all the day eating from junk food they would have more expenses in this case they would spend a lot of money yeah. the stagnation will, 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 will have more and more things that could encourage stagnation and will end up like it's like empty ring that you go through it. Um, mm -hmm. It's the beginning of feel, the feel that the uh, the money or the currency is do, is gonna going through very hard time and the government going th through very hard time. Mm -hmm. uh, there's very good indication we go through minor things like this and showing the the hypocrisy face yeah. because they are not sure if it's gonna help or not. They would hide it with good reasons. Or apparently good reasons. Uh, so if, if it's failed, they would say, "Oh, we didn't, we didn't take the money in account." Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah. I just. I was when you were talking. I looked up something and I saw this because I was wondering, like, how much can they actually make on a tax? You know, a small tax on sodas. But apparently, on average, Mexicans consume more than 40 gallons of soda a year so I don't know how many liters four gallon four liters in a gallon so 160 liters I don't know yeah, yeah it adds up <laughs> yeah yeah it's going to be like that yeah 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 mm -hmm. definitely so Nihon tell us you wrote in the chat um, that in your country in Turkey junk food is more expensive yes Absolutely, because you know Turkey is a kind of agricultural land, and yeah. fresh and healthy foods are m cheaper than the junk foods. Uh, we don't call soda; um, it's a different in Turkey. Soda is a kind of mineral water, but uh, mm -hmm. the Coca-Cola and the, uh, other uh, drinks are more expensive, mm -hmm. and the, especially the. The hamburger, pizza, or that mm. kind of things is mm -hmm. expensive. Um, I think mm, in the near future, uh, that kind of idea not uh, um, not good because uh, it affects the market 
and uh, somebody could uh, lose uh, their jobs the market could be narrowing but uh, in in a long term uh, it's a good position to fight with junk foods because you know the taxes um, for cigarette and alcohol is a little bit higher than the other things mm -hmm. maybe junk foods uh, could um, affect uh, that kind of tax uh, to, to consume uh, that products uh, in the long term mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah but yeah in Turkey uh, um, junk food is considered as a luxury goods, I guess. So I'm wondering, is it is it uh, more expensive because there are taxes on it already? Mm, no, it uh, no? is it. Uh, it is expensive because because that kind of foods is a kind of um, uh, import because uh, we don't um, we don't pro uh, produce. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, you don't make it there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. McDonald's or pizzas or something is always yeah. uh, the originally from the other uh, countries, not uh, the yeah. mentioned, uh, not originally from Turkish uh, uh, companies. Uh, but uh, it's because they are not really, really popular in Turkey. And uh, when something is not really popular, and a specific mm. kind of group just consume that product. That products considered it as a luxury products, and their prices are a little bit uh, high. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you guys, thanks for coming and reading along with us and finding out a little bit about what's going on in Mexico. Um, we're going to continue this conversation. If you want to come along to the next hour, um, I have to close this lesson and then I'll start the other one. So maybe I'll see you there. If not, see you another time. Yeah. Okay. See you soon. Bye. Thank okay, you. Bye. Bye. Deal <laughs> with trying to raise revenue for things uh, that the government has to pay for, and one way they do that, of course, the main way is through taxes. And so uh, the latest thing that uh, governments, I think, around the world are considering taxing is food. Um, now they do that already, but this is a special tax. Um, for junk, you know, what they call junk food, so uh, sodas and things like that, chips and whatever, and so it passed. So in some, in some places, people are trying to do that, and it's not passing, but in Mexico, it just passed. So that's what we we're going to read about and have a yeah. little discussion. Yeah. I agree with you. The taxes are really important. In every yeah, way. well, it's... It's it's like you're in your everyday life, you know, it comes up <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, hi, Amparo. How are you? Hi, teacher. I'm fine, thank you. What about you? Good, good. So, um, I provided the link there, and maybe you guys have already all gone there. Um, we did have a few more reservations, but um, we'll see if anybody else joins us. And in the meantime, we can get started. It's not a very long article, so I think we will have time to uh, discuss this in particular, and then right after this class I'm going to have a conversation class where we are going to be uh, discussing in a larger sense the role of government versus, you know, individual people and that, that whole topic of do we agree <laughs> with our government and what do we do when we don't agree with what they're doing and you know that type of thing so um, so let's get started so this is the title is Mexican Congress passes tax bill with higher junk food levy I also thought it would be interesting to read because um, uh, you know sometimes we tend I tend to or maybe in the English classes people can tend to focus on uh, what's happening in the United States um, but I like to expand it out to other countries because it's also for me at least interesting to find out what are other people doing um, around the world with these types of things, um, things that affect our everyday lives. So we read about before about you know the Chinese uh, college entrance exam, and it turns out that many countries have a similar type of exam, and so it's just interesting to see how human beings uh, make choices around the world. So let's see what the the Mexican Congress decided. Mexico's Congress increased 
a proposed junk food levy as it passed a tax bill championed by President Enrique Peña, Pena Nieto uh, to reduce the nation's dependence on oil revenue and promote growth. The lower house voted 299 to 160 with one abstention yesterday to impose an 8% tax on high calorie foods such as PepsiCo incorporated um, incorporated and then they put the apostrophe S Cheetos so the actual food item is the chips these uh, Cheetos following the same decision by Senate. Okay, Amparo, why don't you start for us? Mexico's Congress included a proposed junk food levy as it passed a tax bill championed by President Enrique Peña Nieto to reduce the nation's dependence on oil revenue and promote growth. The lower house voted uh, 299 to 160 with one extension yesterday to impose an A uh, mm -hmm. percent tax on high calorie food such as Mexico incorporate uh, Cheetos following the same decision by the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this um, this is uh, taken from Bloomberg uh, which is a business kind of a, a website and so th whenever they mention uh, a corporation or a company, they always provide the stock market uh, uh, abbreviation there. So that's that. And so that's why they put the apostrophe S after that. So it, it Cheetos belongs to PepsiCo Incorporated. All right. So let's just go over some vocabulary. So the Congress increased a proposed junk food levy. So levy is just another word for tax. I think in this, this article we have three different types of uh, words that are basically expressing the same idea of a tax, a levy, a duty, and a tax. Uh, so if it's proposed, it's what comes to the Congress as a proposal. So um, it wasn't yet passed, and that's what they were talking about. Um, and it was championed, so it was supported by the president of Mexico. He is one of the main supporters of this uh, proposed bill, tax bill. Whenever you champion something, it's like you support it. You want some. You want in this case, you want other people to support it too. So you just really um, are in support of it. Or in other in other ways, you can also say it's, you like something. It's not so much in this case, but if you champion, uh, you know, doing yoga every day, it's like you want people to do it because you think it's really good. All right. So dependence. So he's trying to reduce their dependence on oil revenue at, and he wants to promote growth too. These are all very common things that you, if you're ever going to listen to a news report or read about government, it, okay. Till the, till the, 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 the 11th of November, although my uh, birthday is the 14th. <laughs> oh, okay. A little early so celebration. I just, I yeah, I just decided to Make the, uh, to make it in advance mm -hmm. because there is just a w the weekend, no? so we can take advantage of the Saturday night, yeah. Friday and Saturday night. Nice. That sounds fun. So it's coming up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Rafael, try it now. Hello? Yes, okay. that's better. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah. And hi there, uh, Nihan. Welcome. Hi, Lisa. Thank you. And taxes again. <laughs> <laughs> taxes again. Well, it came up. It came up um, yesterday or last night in a class that we were having, and we were talking about a variety of things. And one of them, uh, well, we were actually talking about: um, Do we feel optimistic or pessimistic about certain things? And one of the things that we often feel pessimistic about is uh, government, <laughs> our governments. And so we had two people in the class from Mexico, and one of them mentioned to me about this tax. And um, I think it's interesting, so I thought we could read about it and discuss a little bit, um, because it's a common theme around, around the world, and I think everybody has opinions about it, so it's often a good uh, topic is how do you, 
you know, what is your what is going on with your government and do you agree with what they're doing? And so this one thing that Mexico is doing, um, of course, because this is one thing that governments do, is they do Hello, welcome to another Verbling class. And in this hour it's going to be an English reading class. So if you have a reservation, um, you can go ahead and get that now. And we will wait a few minutes to see who shows up. Uh, it usually takes about a minute or two for people to come into class. I know that there are a couple other classes going on right now, and they are just finishing. So um, probably some people from those classes will be joining us shortly. In the meantime, hi, Donato. How are you doing today? Hi, Lisa. I'm doing very well. Nice. I'm doing well. Thank you. Awesome. And Raphael's joining us. Hello, Raphael. Oops. Hi, Raphael. More more verbling today, Raphael. On your day off. <laughs> I can't hear you. Do you have your microphone? Uh, it doesn't look like it's muted, but I don't hear now, maybe. Don't hear a sound. Is it working? Do you, do you hear him, Donato? Yes, teacher. I can hear you. Do you hear um, Rafael? No, I can't. Yeah. Rafael, try coming, um, refreshing the page. Maybe that will help. Come Go out and come back in. So, uh, Donato, yeah. <laughs> when, when is your big birthday party happening in Amsterdam? It is going to be um, since 